Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the videos on the XR Interaction Toolkit provided by Unity. In this new video, I'm going to be customizing one of the AR placement interactables that Unity provides. The implementation that they have allows you to place multiple objects when we have planes detected by the AR Plane Manager. What I want to do is I want to only place one object and only use that object throughout the entire session. So I'm going to show you what you see behind the scenes that is playing right now. We can still do rotation and also scaling, translation of the objects. Everything should work because we're going to be inheriting from the AR base gesture interactable. So let's jump into Unity and start looking at it. All right, guys. So let me show you what I put together as a demo by running the demonstration on my device. You can see the plane gets detected. I can select the object, can move it around, just like I, if I could do it with the implementation that is out of the box. I can also, you know, select it, deselect it, rotate it. And right now I'm tapping in other areas and there's no objects that get spawned, no new objects. So this implementation, it's customized so that we can only spawn a single object at a time. So that's what I want to show you is how we accomplish that versus using the version that Unity provides where we, you know, they're spawning multiple objects. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I have a new scene called the AR Placement Interactable Extension. And this one, it's the one that we're going to use for our demo. I, I have the other ones intact based on the on the previous videos. So you can run this one as I, you know, as soon as I put it in GitHub. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the Unity implementation. And this is going to be, it's going to be very similar to this one. In fact, we're just going to be using some of the events that they provide. I want to, I want to create our own so that we can, you know, we can control how that works. And basically we have our own version. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my events folder. I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this one AI object place placement. We can just call it AI object placement event just to make it different. And then I'm also going to be bringing in the couple of namespaces here. We're going to need the unity event. I'm also going to need the unity engine itself. So it's going to tell us here that we need it. And it's going to also be bringing in, I think it's system. Yep. This one we haven't, I'm not going to be using this one because we're going to be implementing our own. So ours is going to be called AR placement interactable single because it's going to only place a single object. Now, the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to go into my XR extension folder. So I'm going to create a new file and the file that we're going to create is going to be that file. So it's going to be AR placement. And I really don't like the word interactable. For some reason, it's hard for me to say it. <laughs> but anyway, so that's going to be that. I'm just going to copy that name so we don't have to type it in. And then the first thing that I'm going to do is just going to say public class. And this one is going to inherit from a class that is very important for these, you know, for these XR kit. And we're going to be inheriting from AR base gesture interactable. So it's going to say AR base gesture interactable. And it's going to say that it can't find this. So it's going to be bring, bringing in that namespace as well. And you're going to see that this come from the Unity Engine XR Interaction Toolkit.ar. Awesome. So there's a lot of different events in here. If I go to the definition, you're going to see that we, this is more of a, it's actually the base class for, you know, anything that has to deal with gestures that we have to interact with. So objects that we have to interact with through gestures. So if we have a drag gesture and we want to interact with an object using the drag gesture, we can inherit from this class. If we have a pinch, if we have a tab. So the way that it works is always, you know, there's a gesture that gets generated and there's an object that it's, you know, that we're manipulating through that gesture. So think about this class in terms of that. So now that we know that this class exists, we're going to be overriding a couple of the methods that are available. One of them is going to be the can start manipulation for gesture. We're going to be overriding the tap gesture and I'm also the basically this method with a tap gesture and also the on end manipulation so that we can actually place place the object. So let's go ahead and get back to the actual object. So we're going to need an object that we're going to have to instantiate. So to do that, I'm just going to say private game object. And this one is also going to complain because we don't have the the Unity Engine. We can just go ahead and just add Unity Engine because we need the game object. And this one is just going to be the placement prefab. We also need to make it serializable because we need to set this through the inspector. So it's going to tell the system 
you know, I want to serialize that field and I want to expose it to the inspector. So now that we have that, I also need to, I'm going to need another object to for the actual event that we just created. So it's going to be private and this one is going to be AR object placement event, not the one, not this one, because this one comes from the, and we could have used that one if we wanted to, but because we're implementing or uninteractable, that's the reason why I had to create a new one, which is going to be, it's actually, this one actually needs to call, be called placement event, not the, not the other one. There we go. Because some of the, the arguments in here, if I go back to this event, you can see that this is our own class. So I want to broadcast that that was the object that emitted the event. And then this is the object that got placed. So that's what we're creating our own. Now, if we go back into single here, we can now say, you know, this is going to be the method that gets called. So I'm just going to bind, I'm just going to bind to, I'm going to actually expose this method. So it's going to say object place. And then we can just say, yeah. So what's going to happen is we're going to be able to, to associate this with an object that with a method that has the same arguments uh, as our unity event. So I'm going to show you how that is done. So the next thing that I need to track is I also need to track the object that got placed. So this one is going to be the prefab, but this one is going to be the actual placement object. So it's going to say placement object. We don't need to broadcast this one or better, better word is expose because this is going to be the one that we keep track on internally in this class. So now what we need to do is we also need to track the, the actual hits. So I'm just going to say static and this one's going to be a list. And the argument is going to be our AR raycast hit. And that's going to be an array. So we also need to be bringing in, so it's going to say hits. And we're going to be creating just a new list of that type. And I believe we need to be bringing in a new namespace, which is going to be the generics. And there we go. And then also the, also, yep. So I think what I have in here is ink. Oh, there we go. So AR raycast hit. And I need to make sure, let me just make sure that is spelled correctly. So make sure that you spell it with the with the proper, which is lowercase. There we go. We also don't need to expose this one because this one is going to be just used by this class. So now the next thing that we also need to keep track of is going to be the trackable object itself. The way that this is going to be implemented, we're, we're not going to be creating a reference point. It's just going to be using the trackable object that the AR framework is actually providing for us. So I'm just going to say private static. And let me just make sure I spell that right. Game object. And then this game object is going to be used just for the trackables. And I'm going to explain to you how, how this works. So that's basically some of the, you know, the instance variables that we're going to need. We're also going to need to do protect it, override, and it's going to be bool. So the one that we're going to be overriding, let's go ahead and go into our base. So it's going to go into definition. The one that we're going to be overriding is going to be the can start manipulation. So it's going to copy this. And we can just say can start manipulation for gesture, and we can implement it here. There we go. So as you can see, the return type is going to be bool. So we're going to need to tell the system, you know, at what point we, we want to start manipulating based on that gesture. So it's going to say if the gesture target object equal equal no, then we're going to be basically returning true. Otherwise, we're going to be returning, returning false. So as long as we don't have a target object on this interactable, we're going to be allowing the system to interact with basically interact with that object otherwise this is going to be false so it's going to be a very simple method in here so the next one that we are going to need that is going to be a little more in depth is going to be overriding the on end manipulation if we go back into our base let's go ahead and check it it's going to be the type gesture on so it's going to be this one right here it's going to be copying that and then we just need to override it override and this one is going to be void so let's go ahead and because that was the type that these the base has. So let's go ahead and do that. So there's going to be a lot of things in here that we're going to be doing. So it's going to check us. OK, as long as we haven't cap cancel the gesture, then we're going to, you know, we're going to keep going. So if the gesture was canceled, I'm just going to return. And this is very similar to what Unity is doing on their, on their own implementation. So I'm not inventing anything that's basically based on their approach. So it's going to say if the gesture 
the target object. So in this case, we want to check to make sure that it's not null. So if it's not equal, if it's not equal null, then I'm going to return. So it's going to do that as well. Then in the previous AR Foundation videos, I show you how we could use the Raycast as part uh, as part of the the AR AR implementation. So in this case, this is going to be a little bit different on how we're doing a Raycast. So this one is going to call it's going to be calling this gesture transformation utility, and then there's a Raycast method in here that we can use. I'm going to pass in the gesture, also the start position of the gesture. We're going to be passing in the reference to the hits. The, so that we know what is actually getting hit based on the raycast that we're doing in AR. And then we're also going to be calling, telling the system, okay, what type of trackable we're going to be doing a raycast again. So in our case, it's going to be the plane. So it's going to be, I'm going to say trackable type. And I think this one is going to be part of an in space as well. Let me make sure that, yep, it's going to be part of the AR subsystems. And we're going to say that it's going to be the, what well, we're going to be doing a raycast against is going to be the plane within polygons. So that's very common when you're doing detection on, you know, on planes. So that's going to be our if statement. So the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to get basically a reference to the current head. I'm going to get it at index zero. So the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to have to check to make sure that the hittest point that we get is from the above the plane. Otherwise, if it was be beneath the plane, there's really not need to instantiate the object. So to do that, I'm going to be also just doing a little bit of vector math here. So I'm going to say vector three. I'm going to say dot, and then camera that main transform position. We're going to be subtracting the hit post position. The other thing that we also need to do is I'm just going to say comma hit post. And then we're going to grab the rotation and then making sure that this is, you know, facing up. So I'm just going to say vector three, that up. And then I'm going to make sure that that is greater than, you know, greater than zero. If that is greater than zero, that means that I'm detecting, you know, the head is beneath the plane and we don't need to instantiate anything. So in that case, I'm going to be returning. So the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to make sure that I only get one placement object at a time. So I don't want to do multiple which is the main reason why we have to create a new interactable. So I'm just going to say if placement object equal equal null, then I'm going to be allowing instantiation of this object. So it's going to say allowing a new game object for placement object. We're going to say AR placement object. All right, so this one is going to be very straightforward. It's just going to say placement object. We're going to create a new instance going to say instantiate. We have our placement prefab above it. I'm going to grab the basically the position of that hit and then position. And I also want to grab the rotation of the hit so that we can place the object on the basically on the proper rotation and position. So there's multiple ways to do this and unit recommends that we use what's called a reference point. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next videos. But for now, we're just going to be adding a placement anchor and also attaching the placement anchor to the trackables that get generated. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a var and then it's going to be the anchor object. And we're just going to be creating a new game object, placement anchor. And again, this is based on Unity implementation. So I'm not creating anything, just giving them credit for this and position. But I think once we do it with the anchor, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot better. So for now, we can just use what they did. That's fine. And then we're just going to do also the rotation. And then hit that pose. So we're just creating a new game object so that we can anchor the game object that we created to this new placement anchor. And then rotation. So now we need to find the trackable object that it's in the scene. So to do that, we're going to be if trackable object equal equal no. Then I'm going to say, you know, trackable. This is just in case it hasn't been, you know, for some reason, if it hasn't been created, I'm just going to say fine. And then we're just going to be searching for trackables. The, the reason for this is because these trackables is getting created already. So the, the AR already, AR foundation already knows about it. 
So it's, it's much easier to attach ourselves to this because it's gonna be a trackable that gets tracked by the AR system. So the positions, the rotation, everything is going to be coordinated well by the system. So we don't need to you know, keep track of this object by using a reference point just yet, but we will, in, like I said, in the next video. So then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, if the trackable object is not null, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, grab the anchor object, grab the transform, the parent of our anchor object that we created right here. So this is gonna be basically this object is gonna become a child of the trackable. And then what we need to do is just trackable. It's gonna be trackable object that transform. So it's grabbing that object, making it a child of this other object. So there we go. So now the next thing that we need to do is we know you notice that I have an AR placement event. And there's really no reason why you need to do this just right now, but if you need to know at what point you place that object because you may want to change something on the UI, you may want to, you know, generate a different event, it's always good to do to just you know implement something like that. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna be using an allable here, and then it's gonna call the invoke method. We're gonna be passing in this because this is this type, which is AR placement interactable single. And then we're just gonna say that we're gonna be passing the the actual object that we created, not the prefab, but the, the object that got placed, which is going to be the placement object. And that should wrap up the implementation here. So just as a summary, we have our serializable field, which is the, uh, the game object that we are passing in to be instantiated. We have a AR placement object event that is going to be taking in this object and also the object that got instantiated as a parameter. We're also going to be keeping track of the game object that got instantiated so that we don't create multiple objects of it. We also need a static list of AR raycast hits so that we know what we're hitting with the raycast. And we're also needing, you know, basically keeping track of the, the trackable object so that we can attach our, our game object to that object so that we, we basically have a correct orientation of the object and also position. We also overrode the can start manipulation for gesture based on the base class AR base gesture interactable. We also overrode the on end manipulation so that we know when we're ending the tab what we need to do in order for us to place an object. We're looking for, you know, to determine if the gesture was canceled. If it was canceled, we don't instantiate the object. If the gesture target object is not null, then we know that we need to, you know, we're gonna end the manipulation. And we also do an array cast by using the gesture transform utility by passing in the gesture star position, passing in the hits, and also what type of trackables we're gonna be tracking with that array cast. We're also doing some vector mass to make sure that we, we, we're basically doing a ray cast on the right above the plane and not beneath the plane. We're also making sure that the placement object is null so that we don't create multiple placement objects in the scene. And then we're also attaching this placement object to the trackable objects that gets already instantiated by the AR Foundation framework. So that's basically everything that we're doing as far as like, you know, creating an extension of the interactable. So now let's go ahead and go back into Unity. And we need to use that object. I'm also going to be showing you how to use the Unity event. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is, you notice that we have this one that is out of the box, so I'm just gonna be removing. Let's go ahead and add a new component. And now we have our own implementation that is going to have everything that the regular one has, but because it's our extension, it's going to be our own implementation. So we're gonna go into prefabs here and we need to add the game object that we're gonna be placing. So it's gonna go into prefab, select the first one, and then let's select it in here. So the next thing that I need to do is I want to show you how to use this on object place event. So let's go ahead and go back here. And there's multiple ways that we can use that. I think, let's go ahead and, so let's go ahead and go into, so I'm gonna go into my event itself because we're gonna need, we're gonna need to pass in these two arguments. And then we can just use this AR Canvas interaction log. I think that's fine. And I'm just gonna call the same event. It's gonna say, well, it's not gonna be the same event. It's gonna be an event with the same types. And this one can be on object. We can just say on AR object place, place. And then we're gonna be passing in those two parameters. So it's gonna say, this is going to be, i just call it S. I don't think it matters really what we call it. And this one is gonna be just game object. We just call it O. 
and we can just be uh, we can just do it correctly and just call it what is what is called let's just go let's go ahead and do it right I don't want to take any shortcuts and then this is gonna be the place object there we go I think it'll make more sense if I call it what they are so now that we have those two objects I could do something like you know I can call my logger and then instance and then we can just say log no instantiate but instance make sure I select the right one and then log info so the cool thing with this is because I'm passing in these objects now I have access to the entire thing so I could say you know tell me what you know tell me what the game object is tell me what the name is and what I can also do is I can also get the place the actual place object and I can also display the name so you can basically you know return anything back from this instance and and you know do something with it which is which is the whole point of passing in that as a type so how we can actually wire that up is we can go back into we can go back into unity now and let me make sure that i have everything here that we're gonna need because the the, the log so let me go ahead and go into the canvas here i don't think i added that other object so that's fine we can just add it here and I think I call it AR Canvas Interaction Log, and this is gonna need a this is gonna need a type so that we can display it. That's fine. We can use we can just well I was using this one for the logger, and let's go ahead and add another one here. This one is going to be we can just call it AR Canvas Log. It's gonna be different to this log because the let me just make sure that that's correct let me go ahead and delete this i think at the end this is just going to be calling the send log and let me just look at ar gesture interaction gesture interactor log which is going to be this one so let's go ahead and go back i'm what i'm going to do is i'm going to just go back into my ar canvas interaction log i'm going to move this method out of here and i'm just going to add it to our logger and make sure that there we go we can just add it here and yeah I think that's fine if we add it here I didn't want to change this because and I think this one yep I didn't want to change this object because it's mainly for logging but I think for this example it's fine so let's go ahead and go back now and so the login implementation that I have is already associated with the canvas so I'm just gonna remove this one it already has a text box so we don't need to change basically we don't need to change anything the other the only thing that we need to do is we need to go into AR placement interactable and I'm gonna add a new method here which is going to be attached to the object that the canvas has which is going to be the logger so if you look at logger this is gonna tell us that we have a we have a dynamic AR placement interactable single in game object which is gonna be the one on the very top the reason why Unity does that is because that matches the exact signature of this event. So just to explain it a little further, you can see that on object placed, it has an argument of type AR placement interactable single and also a game object. Well, this canvas also has a method that matches that type. So what's gonna happen is when the AR placement object single gets executed, when the on end manipulation gets executed, and when we execute this callback here we're going to be passing in this type which is going to be this instance and also this game object we therefore it's going to be calling the logger and then logger is going to say oh yeah i have i have a method that matches that signature which is basically this argument and also this argument so i have to call these two basically these two different methods so that's everything that i wanted to show you guys if you guys have additional questions please let me know thank you all right guys thank you very much for watching this video today if you guys have any questions about anything that i just showed you please let me know in the comments also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers and also find me in patreon.com where i'm basically posting what i'm doing behind the scenes and also early access source code thank you very much guys